Hey guys, this is Aaron. So a little while back I did a skill builder on how to draw a hinge. It was about components and solid tools and we made half the hinge and then flipped the other one, flipped it around backwards and they, they nested perfectly. It was a pretty cool example of using solid tools and components really. Um, but someone pointed out that that's not how hinges work. Most hinges have an uneven number of round parts. I don't know what they're called. Three on one side, two on the other, and that's a, a typical door hinge. And that's right. I mean, that, that's what most hinges look like. Um, so they asked, a couple people asked, could I show how to do that? And there is a little bit of difference. It's not exactly the same uh, process. So I figured, yeah, let's do that. Let's make a typical door hinge and we'll do it right now. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and draw a line, a vertical line with a circle, hit C to draw a circle right on the top of it. Okay. So I'm not drawing this to scale. I'm just kind of drawing relative shapes that are going to be, you know, good for the size of a hinge. I don't have exact dimensions. If you have exact dimensions of a hinge, you can actually do this to scale or draw it first and then scale it out. Um, I drew two extra lines here. One is to convert the straight part of the hinge into the curve. The other part is where the curve is going to end. So I'm going to come in afterwards and delete these lines. That's the profile of my hinge. Now, I'm going to go grab a rectangle, hit R, and I'm going to place a rectangle from this corner, and I'm going to pull it up this way. I'm going to ex exaggerate this ever so slightly. It's important that this rectangle fall this way, so away from the opening on the profile. And we'll see why exactly that is in just one second. Um, I drew it exaggerated because I just want to get it in there, but it's pretty easy if you after you draw that to come in here and you know, shrink up or move these edges around just using move and sticking to the axes. All right. Once that's all in there, I'm going to select these lines. I'm going to say, follow me and pick the shape on the ground. All right. That's going to come in and all right. That looks pretty good. That's a, that's going to be half of our hinge. I like that. I'm going to come in and make a couple changes. I'm going to start with an arc. I'm going to come to one corner. I'm going to click on this side and move along the perpendicular side till the arc turns magenta. That means it's tangent to both ends. So will give a, an arc that smoothly transitions from one side to the other and click twice to place that. Oop. Now to get it on the other side, the exact same arc, I can just move in here and double click near the corner. As long as I don't do anything else, it'll copy that arc over there. Now I can just push pull this piece back, push pull that piece, double click again, push pulls at the same distance. All right, looking good. I do, I'm, I'm sorry, everybody say bye, Laura. She's, she's in my peripheral vision, she's messing with my design. I'm gonna grab my tape measure tool and I'm gonna pull a line up here and I'm pull another line right about here. I'm gonna pull another one to the middle. These are gonna create the intersections where I'm gonna put the screw holes. This one's gonna come this way. I'm gonna say I'm gonna put it over here, one foot 10. I used a dimension instead of an arbitrary measurement because I wanted both of these to go to the same spot. One foot ten. Okay, now I can come in here with my circle. I'll put one here. And then I want to put the same size circle, these other two points, so I'll just select it, move, hit my modifier key to copy, grab it from the middle, and put it at the next intersection. Again, modifier key again, grab that point to there. All right. At this point, I don't need my guides anymore, so I can delete them. I could use the delete guides command, but there's only five of them, and uh, it's pretty easy to just use the eraser to get rid of that few. All right, now I'm gonna do an offset to my first circle here. I'm just gonna double click here, double click here, push pull to pull this through. It can be hard when you have this little tiny offset to, to snap to that back. So what you can do is you can just move over here and use the back edge right here. As long as I'm anywhere on this line, it's going to offset to the back face and remove that completely. I'm going to double click here, double click here. Now to create my countersink, I'm just going to grab my three internal circles. One, hold down shift, two, three, and I want to move them parallel to the hole. So I'm going to go into move and I'm going to move along this line right here. Click it. As I drag along there, you can see it starts to countersink. All right, that looks good. I like that. I'm gonna triple click and make that a group. If I look at my entity info, it's telling me it's a solid group. That is good, that's important. We have a good start. All right, now, 
outside the group. I'm going to come in and draw a line. This line is where the cuts for the hinge parts are going to go to. So I'm going to come just like just below right there and I'm going to draw a line across and I'm going to draw a rectangle on the red and blue axes to create a square perpendicular to the end of the hinge or rectangle, excuse me. I'm going to pull that rectangle all the way to the other side. Then I'm going to triple click and make that a new group. All right, now I want to double click to enter this group. I don't want to see my shadowed hinge piece right now, so I'm going to go to View, Component Edit, and hit Hide Rest of Model. Ooh, I don't need that line either. Now I can take this line, I can say Divide, and I want to divide that into five pieces. And at each of those endpoints, I'm going to click here and drag across. I don't have endpoints turned on, but I saw where they were, so I can feel pretty good about just dragging along this line until I hit an endpoint, and then click and draw a line along the red. All right, so now I have five surfaces down here. Once I'm done with that, I can click to close that, exit out of the group. Now I'm going to grab both of these, and I'm going to use move with the modifier key to make a copy. I'm going to just copy it over here. It doesn't actually have to stand axes or anything like that. With both of them selected, though, I am going to hit scale and invert it, so I'm going to scale it to negative 1. Now, everything is still groups, remember. Group, 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 group. I'm going to go into this group right here. I'm going to use push-pull to push up the second and fourth rectangle. It doesn't matter how far I go up as long as it is up past the edge of the hinge. This piece over here, double-click, I'm going to push up the first, third, and fifth section. Again, as long as I go past. Now, I'm going to select this piece. This is my cutter. I'm going to go over to Solid Tools and use Subtract from the hinge. There we go. Over here on this piece, select my cutter, Subtract from the hinge. All right. Now, if everything went well, I should be able to grab this hinge by this same point we used for that uh, countersink and line it up right here. If I did that all right, everything should, oh, look at that. It worked perfect. All right, so last piece, let's just get a pin in here real quick. Go to circle, find the middle point, align to the green axes, pull that straight out. I'm gonna push pull that just past the end. And you can make it flush if you want it. I want it to stick out a little bit. And then I need a head here, so I'm gonna offset that again out to that outer circle. Push pull that up a bit, pull the inside up. I can delete that, triple click, make that a new group. All right, and that hinge is done. I can select this piece now, and I could actually use rotate to use this use the center of the hinge. That middle point of the pin is the middle point of the whole hinge. So I can just grab that and then I can rotate that up like that. So that looks a lot more like a standard hinge. It does have the three on one side, two on another, and the steps were not, not totally different, but they were a little bit different from what we did with the other ones. Um, some new opportunities to learn some new things. That's what I'm always looking for. Uh, hopefully you like that. If so, go ahead and click like down below, and if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe. We put out a couple of videos and live streams a week around here, and you'll be notified if you are a subscriber. Most importantly, though, please leave a message down below. Leave us a comment. Most of our content is derived from comments from viewers like you. This one specifically came right out of the comments. So we like making these videos a lot, but we like them even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.